Welcome, 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 and thank you for spending some of your time with us. My name is Tina Rosenquist, and this is Knowledge for Wellness. And this show is to enhance your overall understanding of information provided to you, because when you know more, you are empowered to make better decisions, to enhance yourself and your loved ones for a better quality of life. And knowledge is power. And today's topic is on advanced biomedical technologies with Ed Leffler, owner of Advanced Biomedical Technologies, and Nancy Nelson, a spokesperson for Advanced Biomedical Technologies. And she, of course, herself is very famous and a celebrity here in Minnesota. So welcome, Nancy. Thank you, Tina. How nice of you to have us over. Thank you very much. It's oh, good to be here. And I'm so delighted that you could be on Knowledge for Wealth. My Wellness. great pleasure. And also, Mr. Leffler. Thank you for having us, Tina. Thanks for coming back. And what a great guest that you brought, Nancy Nelson. Oh, I'll tell you what, he's the great one. Wow. He, he, he put me back in shape, and I was so afraid that I'd be having surgery and wouldn't ever be in shape again. So he's the great one here. Wow, that's such a great even story oh, right there. Oh, it's true. Yeah. It's true. But we want to kind of, uh, since you haven't been on Knowledge for Wellness before, we'd really love to hear about yourself and a little bit of your history, since you actually are a celebrity, was on Date with Dino. Oh, you're so funny. When you say actually a celebrity, I always have the sense that... Um, in the first place, th th there's nothing but tremendous luck involved in having a lifelong career, and, mm -hmm. and I'm gr grateful for it. But uh, that word celebrity is always uncomfortable. That and $2.69 gets you a loaf of bread at the grocery store. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. so, But um, I, I born and raised in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, went to Minnehaha Elementary, Nokomis Junior High School, Roosevelt High School, and the University of Minnesota. Um, started my first television show that you already mentioned, Date with Dino, mm -hmm. when I was still in high school. I was on the stage at the age of eight. I went on the professional stage uh, two weeks out of high school when Don Stoltz at the Old Log Theater hired me. Okay. Um, oh, golly. Uh, I, I did the pageant routine. I was Miss Minnesota. I, I um, did lots and lots of television shows. Uh, probably the one that was the luckiest for me was at WCCO TV. Dave Moore had the bedtime news on Saturday night. Bill mm -hmm. Carlson had This Must Be the Place. Okay. And I would come in from the Old Log Theater and get to um, WCCO, and I was the weather girl uh, in between the bedtime news and This Must Be the Place. And it, it, that was the era of mini skirts and go-go boots. Uh -huh. And I would walk. I know. It's, I know. Go and they're coming and back. Laugh, okay. laugh if you want. And, and, I would, and, and, and I would walk across the map on, a, on the floor and stop. And as I would stop, uh, they would shoot my leg and my ankle and the state that I was standing in. So for years, I always said I don't recognize the face, but the ankles are familiar. Um, <laughs> Went on to do a talk show at Channel 11, eventually uh, was fortunate enough to uh, be offered a news anchor position in Los Angeles, at which point I uh, commuted back and forth because my husband was on the air here in um, Minneapolis, Minnesota, so I flew home every Friday night. Flew back to work every Sunday night. Did that for several years. I'm much younger than I look. I don't recommend that. That's, well, you look quite young. Yeah, oh, keep it up. Keep okay. it up. That's hard <laughs> duty. But. Mm -hmm. Um, without question, the uh, the most uh, wonderful, extraordinary, amazing, miraculous thing about my life was that uh, I was married to Bill Carlson, mm -hmm. uh, the television news anchor at WCCO-TV. Billy and I were married nearly 38 years before I lost him to cancer. Oh. And uh, that is the sum and total and the best part and the only part of my life that truly, truly matters. Yeah. And I'm sorry for your loss. I'm so grateful I had him. Yes. I'm so grateful I had him. What a trip. Mm -hmm. What a trip. Wow. And it sounds like you two complement each other quite well. Uh, we were in the same business, and so we were able to, uh, yeah, we understood it. It's mm -hmm. a business that can totally consume you and, and quickly does, mm -hmm. and it's ups and downs, and you're constantly being judged by people you never meet who either think you're absolutely fabulous, which you're not, or think you're absolutely the dreck of the universe, which you're not. Mm -hmm. They adore you or they hate you. There's very little in between, and both of those can be somewhat paralyzing. Yes, I can imagine you take it very personally. I have no complaints. Mm -hmm. Minnesota's been very, very good to us, and uh, I, I, you're looking at one of the most fortunate people you've ever met. Yeah, wow. That's great. 
And you met Mr. Leffler. Talk about fortunate. <laughs> well, my fortune and yours. Yeah. It really, it really was, it was such an interesting, um, I do a radio show on uh, AM 950 on Saturday mornings. Okay. And uh, it uh, turned out that Ed was one of the advertisers on AM 950. And I had a very, very bad fall down the stairs. A fall that years ago wouldn't have made any difference, but I'm a couple of years older than I was <laughs> years ago. <laughs> it may have mattered back then, too. Wow, uh, I'm telling you, I, 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 I caught my foot, I guess, in the carpeting or something, and by the next day, my knee was like a little basketball and full of water, I guess, right? Would yes, that have been? It was quite swollen. But, but that's water on the knee? Yes, Is that fluid. What and I immediately went over to get an MRI, and they said, oh, you haven't completely torn your meniscus, but you have meniscus. I, that's a new word I learned, mm -hmm. too. But you have kind of done things to it. And, and <laughs> whatever it was I did wasn't good. And the first thing they said was, you've got all this pain because of the water on your knee. we got to get the water off your knee. Okay. And it turned out I was going to have a business meeting with Ed, about ABT to learn more about yeah. it because I wanted to learn more about it. We tried to connect yeah. several times and schedules kept us apart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I called him and I said, you know that meeting we're going to have tomorrow? I can't because I'm going to have this water drawn off my knee because of the him and him and him. And he said, oh, if you don't mind, please just cancel that and come out and see me first. Oh. And I'm thinking, really? I had a talk to get her to come out. Oh, yeah. Well, she it, was a bit reluctant. You know, I'm, I'm. Uh, you go to the doctor, and the doctor says, "Okay, we'll do this, and we'll poke sure. this, and we'll do that, and mm -hmm. you fix it." And um, that's all we knew. <laughs> for the most part, that's all I still know. Mm -hmm. Ed is educating me differently. So um, I went out to ABT the next day, and by that time, I really, I probably could have been on crutches because I could barely walk yeah, in. Very difficult. I couldn't hardly put any weight on it, and it <coughs> hurt so badly. And Ed said, okay, get up on the table. First, I loved how he explained things to me. Oh, yes. And he talked about the fact that um, what I had was muscle damage, and muscle damage can be rectified with what ABT has because of the molecular structure and how you move the molecular structure back into place so you let the muscles do their own work again. Am I close? Close. Close. Good enough. <laughs> Good enough, Nancy. <laughs> and it's all sounding... All of a sudden, like, this makes total sense. If you have a muscle injury, you've got the inflammation, you've got the, and why not try to put things back into place, which chiropractors do, which surgeons try to do. I've done all of those things at various times, not for my knee, but other things, and none of them have been all that successful. So he said, okay, come in here and get on my table, he said. <laughs> <laughs> and I went in, and um, about 45 minutes later, I, it was so bad, I remember lifting my leg up onto the table and hurt, mm -hmm. and... And, and the machines that you have, um, I'm a layman, so I'm not describing it properly, but it has a cord, and it has what seems to me, it's almost a cylindrical sort well, of... Well, it's an electrode. Yeah, but it's... It's a handheld it's, electrode. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, and literally, he just was doing this. In all the right places. In all the right places. But he was doing this, and I'm thinking, well, this is interesting. Um, and he's explaining to me what's happening as he's going, and then pretty soon you're kind of into it, and then you forget that you lifted your leg up onto the thing, and Ed, at about the end of 45 minutes, said, okay, let's see if we have any difference at all. And I said, okay, and I remember I went and got down up off the table and started walking around the room, and it wasn't until a couple of seconds later I said, wait a minute, I couldn't hardly walk in here. And... Um, it, it, it truly was instantly. I'm, I went from um, an 8 on the pain scale to a 2 on the pain scale instantly mm -hmm. That in that 45-minute period. <coughs> um, my knee was still a little swollen. By the next morning, there was no swelling at all. There was never an appointment made to draw off the fluid with the needles. That mm. was never done. Wow. Um, still hurt a little bit. Mm -hmm. And after this wasn't hurting so badly, it hurt here and here. The rest of the injury. The rest of the injury. Mm -hmm. And Ed said, sure, well, this is, was your focus, and your brain was telling you this hurt the most, but you pulled all of this. So you said to me, it'll take six or seven times, Actually, and it'll be over with. Actually, it didn't take that many, did it? I, th I, I think, think we had five. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was going to say four, and mm -hmm. then I came back for a tweak. Yeah. 
um, and I'm 100% and uh, there was no surgery, there were no needles, there was, yeah. a, so it, to me it was a miracle because I thought I was in for the long haul with mm -hmm. the needles and the thing and the, maybe the surgery and the laparoscopy. And the treatment and the, was comfortable. The treatment's great. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You lay down on the table and there's music playing and Ed will talk to you if you want and he doesn't if you don't want. And, okay. and I remember one time I was laying there and I went, because I woke myself <laughs> up. <laughs> wow. uh, it's great. It's, it, and, and the thing that, that of course, was encouraging to me is that um, I'm at an age as a baby boomer mm -hmm. where I have aches and pains that I never had before and I have so many friends who do. I have uh, f a f friend with serious migraine headaches that she's suffered with her whole life. Um, I have people I know with carpal tunnel syndrome um, and we started talking about that and to my astonishment Ed said those are all muscle injuries. Even the migraine headaches, you yes. said, are muscle... Headaches are vascular. And when muscles contract tightly, they stop the blood supply to certain areas of the head. Mm -hmm. They compress nerve tissue. The combination creates awesome headaches in many people. But, but you explained <clears throat> to me that literally a series of somewhere you said between five and eight treatments, for the most part, people who've had migraines maybe for decades he says, mm -hmm. walk out of there at the end of those maybe eight treatments and never have a migraine again for their uh, whole life? Perhaps saying never would be overstating okay. it. Okay. Even at worst, it would be managing the headache. Wow. Within three to five treatments, most chronic headache patients no longer have the headache. Mm -hmm. Carpal tunnel syndrome, which is well, a muscular when we, thing? To give you an example, when we contracted with General Electric mm -hmm. for their appliance division, they had a a oodle of carpal tunnel based oh, on sure. the type of work. These sure. were uh, assembly sure. workers with appliances. Mm -hmm. Repetitive motion. And out of the 230 some odd employees that came through with carpal tunnel, only one went to surgery. The rest continued doing the job wow. and still got better. That was a big plus. Yes. One of the things that I found interesting when, when I had the treatment um, is that you were explaining to me the, the machine not only sends whatever electrical impulse is putting things back where they ought to be, uh, but um, you said it is measuring the depth? What it measures is called the bioimpedance. And from that measure, it controls both the current, the voltage, and frequency. Which means it's instantaneously and constantly reading what, what, what's, what's it's, impedance? It's finding what, what what's wrong. Mean? Impedance is the how current would flow or not flow through a tissue medium. But as you're moving that, that I call it the cylinder, sure. if you will, over my leg as you did, does that mean then that that cylinder is constantly re-reading virtually every split second? every two and a half thousandths of a second, it updates itself. Now the amazing thing is, this, this is, gets kind of interesting here, mm -hmm. uh, this cause of ion exchange won the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 1991. Mm -hmm. Now that's so really So we can't amazing. be all that wrong. No, <laughs> but if it won the Nobel Prize, and the other thing that, that Tina, I was very interested in, because, well, I mean, after all, this is what you do for a living, so you're very concerned, aren't you, about how people care for their body, but you don't want to do anything reckless. No. And when Ed said to me, this has been FDA approved since when? Uh, 87. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Excuse it's FDA me, approved. 78. 78. Yeah. So it's FDA approved. So right. you already know you're working with something that the FDA says is okay to, to do. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm, just, I'm just dazzled by it, and I want, I want everybody to experience it because mm -hmm. pain is such a debilitating thing. And it seems to me that in trying ABT, as was the case for me, you have nothing to lose except the pain. Right. And maybe mm -hmm. a little bit of time. It's not gonna hurt you. You're not taking a lot of drugs. You're not getting cut. Mm -hmm. You're not it, looking at rehab time. You're not, it's what have you got to lose but the pain? The worst thing that would happen <laughs> is it wouldn't work. And that doesn't seem to be your history at all. It always seems mm, to work. Very small percentage, mm -hmm. very small. Does not work. Does not. But the uh, rest do. 90% plus we get tremendous results and we get them very quickly. Mm -hmm.